How's the mood? Really good. Yeah. You know, we've, uh, we've had a really positive week. Uh, training's been difficult at times, you know, with the weather bomb that's come in. Um, it's been, we've had to shift all, you know, full training day, but when I mean a full training day, I'm talking, you know, reset where the food's going, uh, reset all the medical department, we've got to reset that. You know, we took over uh, JJD, JJB over at um, the Trafford Centre, took over the three courts, you know, but, you know, we do it right. We make sure that all the staff, um, you know, are, are ploughing away to get a really top, top uh, training event on wherever we go. So mm -hmm. it's been it's been an hard week in terms of shifting everything around and, and getting away from sort of lower gig because uh, it's just been under under the water. But, you know, we've, we've put some good sessions on this week and the lads have really responded and uh, we've had a real positive week. I was going to ask you this later on, but you must have seen the pictures this week, Man City's training complex. Is that something you can use, you can get your hands on? No, I think uh, we, we had a meeting with them probably three or four months ago and you know they set the vision out and they showed us, we met Brian Marwood and, and he showed us the vision. and uh, It was probably about 50% complete, um, quite outstanding, but you know, I think th what they've done it for is, is to you have know, the best in the world. They want to compete with the best. They want to. It's that I think it's the best um, training centre in the world. Mm. Um, it's on a different level. It's it's a different world. You know, they've got they've got you know Patrick Vieira is probably fronting it up from twenty ones down. You know, so they've got someone who's who's been at the top of the game. Um, but when you actually look at the the detail, the level of detail. Uh, it's, it's, there's no comparison, you know, in world football now with with what they've built there, um, and and it and it shows you what what you can achieve with fantastic amounts of money. But it's a fantastic vision, it really is, you know. And and I hope that Man City do it. I hope that they do produce, you know, homegrown players and um, and local players and players that you know are English, you know, born and 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 that that they brought up with the English values because if you cannot go there, be stimulated and, and enjoy becoming a professional footballer with all them uh, facilities that are there, then you know you shouldn't be involved in football. So as soon as they've got this brand spanking new training ground, does that mean they've got an old training ground that's going free? Nothing's going free, God, is there? <laughs> you don't get anything for free, but no, uh, I think the Platte Lane complex, uh, which we've, we've sort of had a look at, um, that's gone to Manchester University, so... Uh, that was something that, you know, through the journey and Kendall, we had, a, we had a potential look at that. And then the one at Carrington, um, we're not too sure what they were doing with that. They're playing the cards close to the chest mm. with that one. So it's one of them, you know, you, you dream about, you know, them sort of facilities. Mm. Um, but, you know, what we've done well here and what we've been able to do well is, uh, you know, beg, steal and borrow at times and make sure that, you know, we, we, we move around the northwest. We've got some facilities that we've been using and... Um, you know, when this weather snap comes in, you've just got to be, you know, 24, 48 hours in front because it can change, uh, can change pretty quickly. Where are we on new training ground? Is that on hold? Is it still developing? I think it's, it's something that's developing. You know, I think uh, it's something that the chairman massively believes in and, uh, you know, to keep attracting top quality players to the football club, it's something that, you know, will need to be looked at. Um, we thought it was getting near, you know, with sort of the Berry Grammar situation. Uh, and the site, you know, might you know might be not right for what we're trying to do. So we'll look at the next opportunity, the next uh, different venture out there, and there will be something. You know, with, with the chair and the board, they'll 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 find something that's uh, that's right. Time scale on it, you know, that could be difficult in terms of having a time scale on it. Um, but we'll keep grafting up where we need to get to, and um, and and trying to you know produce good training days. Going back to last weekend, that euphoria from that late goal, can, can you bottle that? Can you take that into the next couple of games? I don't think you can bottle it. I think you can uh, you can certainly use it. You know, we've used it this week in terms of, of the spirit and um, what you can do when, when you, you believe and you don't stop believing in in that you've uh, you've got, always got an opportunity to, to claw yourself back into a game or get back into a game or go win a, win a football match. And I think what we saw was, uh, you know, the, the celebration um, from from when we scored it, from players who who had come off, from the, the lads who was on the bench, from the lads in the stand who come down, you know, to to be part of that. Um, and when I turn round, there's a snapshot of of what I've got in my head of, of when I've turned round that support there, um, 
was quite unique. But I think the the biggest thing for me on the actual uh, day was potential frustrating afternoon in terms of how, how the how we how the goal was conceded against us. Mm. But the fans never lost belief. They never lost hope, and they they carried the team. They carried the team. They carried the staff, and that's that support I talk about. You know, and and, and I do believe that if you get that support, that's that's there in, in when it's not going too good. That's when you know you've got the strength of the stadium, you know, behind you, and and that's what I certainly saw on Saturday. You know that the supporters never didn't believe that we'd get back into the game. They appreciated the way that we kept knocking on the door and kept trying to create chances and hurt Luton, and um, eventually we did, and we kept plugging away. And you know that the, the lads needed that. They needed that lift. They needed that rise. They needed the stadium to stay with them, and uh, and they did that. So you know, massive thank you to the fans because. They, they they kept driving us and driving us and uh, you know it wasn't for the, for the want of trying you know it was a it was a mistake and uh, you know you can see the goal that that um, you know you've got negative negative equity in the game and uh, I think the fans appreciated that we didn't deserve that but certainly you know Nard's coming on and, and grabbing that and you know he doesn't need a lot of space in the box mm. to do his work Nard's and and he finished it superbly. 17 corners, that's 17 balls into the box. Take out the crosses that they got in on top of them. That's a lot of balls into the box. They set up really well for it though. You know, Luton do set up well for for that type of um, onslaught. You know, they've got uh, Matt Nolte, who's fantastic in, in, in reading things he's in the box. He's a unit, isn't he? He's, he's, he's clever. You know, he sets himself up. He doesn't he doesn't expose him himself and, and you know he, he did immaculate but they've kept a lot of clean sheets doing that you know sometimes they invite you on um, and they've probably not not faced that sort of onslaught but uh, you know they stood firm and they had something to hang on to which was uh, which was the, the goal they scored they had that to hang on to so you know the, there was a resolution about what they did but you know eventually we did break them down and, you know if anyone didn't think we deserved to be in the, the hat for the next round then you know I'd like to meet them and and discuss their feelings. Why? Injury-wise, did we come out unscathed? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we've uh, we've had a good week in terms of that. You know, with with no Tuesday fixture, we've had a really good week in terms of getting everyone up to uh, up to speed. Uh, we've sent a couple of lads for injections, uh, some sugar injections, just to give them um, you know a lift in in the injury sites. Uh, we had the, the you know we've had two weeks of sort of illness and. Uh, whether it's the change in weather or not, I'm not too sure, and, and the, the sickness that was in the camp, uh, we're over that now. We've had a really clean week, um, so we've got a, we've got a really fit, uh, hungry squad going down to uh, Oxford. No, Calvin last week was that something serious? No, on the Friday he just felt his hamstring, and uh, that's something with Kelvin that you know over the last couple of seasons, when this you know fatigue's been in and when the pitches get a little bit heavy, um, we probably. You know, his training load, we might have had to keep him off for another day of his training load and, 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 and take him, you know, in the pool or do some recovery work with Kelv. <coughs> As the pitches and training training venues get, you know, get mm. um, heavier. So that's something we're looking into. You know, we've got we've got a fantastic med medical department and, um, you know, they're... We're really now working on specifics of what players need as opposed to a one-size-fits-all training programme. So, you know, we're trying to, you know, evolve as a, as a staff um, and try and implement strategies to make us better. Um, and part of that process will be, you know, to get this squad and keep as much of this squad fit and ready for games as possible because I think there's, um, you know, a game every four days coming up uh, pretty shortly with the Christmas period. So this squad's going to get taxed. First real test for the pitch with the heavy weather last week and this week. How, how did it play Saturday? It's played okay. I think this, it's a new pitch, you know. So there's a lot of settlement and imbalance in the pitch. It's quite clear to to see that, you know, and it's evident to see that. <clears throat> We've had to modify our training program a little bit, and you know, we're uh, at the start of the season we was a bit more slicker and, and passing the ball quicker um, with a with a with a firmer punch and. You know, a lot more one touch in our play. We've just had to, uh, you know, really put care on the ball and two touches. It's, it's there's, there's just these undulations and there's unsettlement. It doesn't look like that, you know, maybe as if you're in the stand, but certainly when you watch the videos back and, and when you actually go on the pitch, uh, it's quite evident. So it's a new pitch, you know, we've uh, that's settling, and um, we, we've, you know, the chairs looking at different ways to try and get that on a more uh, even level and. Um, We've had the companies in who's done it and 
you know, they're, they're, they're really working hard on, on finding a solution for that. But, you know, it's like the work Mike puts, puts in and the work he does and his staff does. They, these guys, they 60, 70 hours a week to try and get, uh, you know, the pitch right and the training facilities right. So, uh, no, it's, um, I think it's, it's a new pitch that's, that's just, just finding its feet. It's, it's not going to happen overnight. It'll go take time to sell. Potentially, you know, potentially, uh, we, we're not too sure we've had tests done on it and uh, it's been profiled and, um, you know, I think every pitch reacts different, you know, whoever does it, every pitch reacts different and we have, um, you, you can see how it's, you know, it's undulated and where it's, uh, where it's dipped. How did 83 minutes for Hallam Hope go? No, no adverse reactions? No, no, again, come through it really well um, and... You know, he's, he's, he's what I keep saying, he's something different to the strikers we've got. He, uh, he's a genuine threat, he's got a genuine pace. Uh, the ball that Danny Mayer's put him through, um, and he's trying to come across on his right foot to lift it over the keeper. You know, it was, uh, that goes in, you know, and, and we really have got a foothold in the game. So, um, Alan, Alan will create his own chances. He'll be in the box to get chances. He's got a desire to score goals. Alan Moat can be anything he wants to be. You know, I've seen it over the last, Two two weeks, certainly ten days. That the guy's ruthless and his his pursuit to be the best he can be. Um, he's an elite machine. His VO two max is as good as anything, you know, in the championship. And um, he's just going to get stronger and powerful. And it's like we said at the time, you know, we we had a we've got a player who's not done, you know, an intense training program. He's not played any games. He's not played any twenty ones games. So he's really out of a games program. Uh, I think if we'd have hit him hard too early. We'd have got you know some real injury problems with him, so it's really important that uh, again we, we have a specific program for Alan uh, that we've designed to get him to get him to play as many minutes as we can. The cup draw, not the the glamour tie everybody was looking for, but still a tough game if we get past Luton. Yeah, you know we've concentrated on Luton. I think what the FA Cup draw does it it just adds excitement wherever you are, whoever you are, um, and it's that adrenaline of thinking that you might get one of the. You know the top teams. Uh, there was quite a few Premiership clubs playing Premiership clubs, which knocks out that opportunity to play <clears throat> one of the top boys. Um, but absolutely, you know, it's, it's they both winnable games. Uh, Luton's a winnable game. Um, if it's Mansfield or Cambridge, they're winnable games. But I think you know we've really focused on some of the boys. You know, wanted to have a chat about it this week, but you know our focus is on Oxford, and it, and it will remain on Oxford because uh, it's the next game that we can affect mm. uh, to get us back on track. Touched on it, Oxford. What do we know? How do we beat them? We we concentrate on us. We concentrate on on us dominating uh, Oxford. Uh, you know, in all aspects of what we do, um, we've got fantastic players at the club. Um, they fit, and they are ready to. After a week we've had, they're ready to get out there. You know, it's been it's been a good week, but you know, after after the Luton game, it's been quite a long week. Uh, we'll get down there tomorrow. We'll get the lads bedded in, and um, you know we'll, we'll certainly have a lot of energy on the pitch. That's what I do know. We'll have a lot of energy, uh, a lot of dynamic power to go and take on uh, you know a good a good Oxford team. Um, they've been able to build and 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 put together you know a very a very strong team, and um, they've got the the loan signing of Barney up front that uh, you know he's caused problems. So we've got they've got strength in their team. But we've also got a lot of strengths in our team that, that they're going to have to nullify and um, and deal with. A couple of long trips now. Oxford, Saturday, Luton, Tuesday. Is this where the manager starts saying we need bigger squads? No, absolutely not. You know, we've got a highly competitive squad now. You know, it's um, with with Adam coming in and Eddie White and Hallam and um, Mills. We've got four, you know, top performers there. So. We've got a squad. It's, it's how we utilise that squad. Certainly, I think in 20, 25 days we've got seven games. Um, you know, so but it's, it's as a staff. I think it's as a staff how we how we communicate, how we um, how we recover, how uh, our recovery strategies we put in place, and um, certainly how we train. The, the training program, the recovery strategies, the food, the hydration. Um, all that's going to be absolutely vital over this next, you know, five weeks period. So we've we've calculated some of it, uh, fifty percent of it. But you just never know. You never know if you get injuries. 
uh, you never know which players to wrap up in cotton wool. That's something that's an ongoing process that over the games, you know, we might have more problems after after the Oxford game. Um, the Luton games give us another game to plan for, but it's fantastic, you know, it's, it's the FA Cup that we're planning a game for, so, um, you know, it's just some, it's another game we've got to put in the calendar. Are you a fan of Christmas games and so many games so close together? <clears throat> I think it's dangerous at times, you know, I understand why they do it, um, but, you know, for me, it's a lean spell, people have spent hard and cashing on Christmas and trying to give the, the families the best Christmas ever, and, and you know, then then you've got football in between that and in the middle of that. Um, and I think with financial fair play, squads have got smaller mm. and and they are stretched. And you know, we were talking about it the other day and, and saying that you know, if you're one of the top boys, the elite the elite teams, they've got everything. You know, the, the Man City complex will have hydrotherapy pools, probably 15 sports scientists. You know, 10 masseurs. Um, the full rig to, to, to fuel that recovery, supplementation, they'll spend fortunes on, on supplementations and, and jabs and, and blood samples and blood tests and, and really understanding where that squad's. I think they've got a lab in at Man City. So, you know, I think when you get to that level uh, in the Premiership, you can cope with it. I think sometimes at League Two and League One, uh, it can be difficult, but, you know, as a player, we, we program to do it, program to train and, um, you know, it's, it's something that we've got to deal with as a squad and as a staff. Um, I certainly don't mind being, you know, in, in Christmas Day and being in, in around that period because it's just what you're used to. Mm. You know, normal to me is what I'm used to and, and certainly being around Christmas, I'd find it strange if I wasn't in around football at Christmas uh, and I'd probably miss it. So I know, I know there's a, a, a quest and a thirst for um, an, an international break and, and having a Christmas break and, and it's how you'd fit it in. but. Germany, I think, you know, who's, who's won the World Cup, I think they had five week off. Yeah. But by Munich in that five five weeks, they have a ten day ex extensive program of fitness and lab testing and and seeing where they're at. So it's it's different. It's the way we do things in England. Um, but again, I think a, a small squad can be taxed to to the maximum. And uh, you know, we've got a duty of care as a football nation, you know, to uh, to make sure that we limit the amount of injuries you get. Nothing like a nice local derby on Boxing Day, is a Northampton away. It's a strange one. See, that's, that's where they get it wrong. That's where, you know, um, the people who design the, the football fixtures, they get it wrong. You know, we've, I've just alerted to it, the fans who spend so much money on, on travelling to games, going to games, hotel stay, um, travel, petrol still service stations. But to put that right on Boxing Day, if you just you know, spent money on, on, on the Christmas period, the Christmas meal, the Christmas presents. Um, it's, it's, it is farcical. It, we got Accrington away two weeks later, so why can't this just swap them? Well, it's common sense, surely. It's, it's, it's an easy solution, God, isn't it? You know, that, uh, you know, it's not hard to come up with and, and I'm sure uh, from a gate and a tender's point of view, you know, Northampton would have preferred, you know, a local fixture to them, mm -hmm. so I don't get it, you know. We're, we're looking at expense of, of having to stay over. Do we stay over? Do we not? So there's there's a lot of implications to it, and um, you know it's, it's a daft one. Twelve months in, you enjoying it? Has it gone to plan? It's it's gone better better to plan than I ever expected it to. Um, you know, you come into a football club not knowing everything. Uh, on the outside, you know you you. What's probably surprised me is. Um, I thought there was more infrastructure in place than that, what there actually was. And, um, you know, that's something that, as we evolve as a football club, I'm sure we'll build, you know, there's some exciting things to look forward to in January that the chairman and the board are working on. Um, and, and I've seen some of them, uh, them developments and opportunities, and it's absolutely fantastic the football club's going in that direction. Um, the timescales on it, you know, does it affect me as a manager? Probably doesn't, because, you know, it's the here and now. I think that the, the the biggest thing in my tenure is finding out, you know, the expectation levels and the here and now. People, if you're not winning games, you know, they question, you know, why you're doing things, what you're doing things, and and that's something that I, I, what I do look for look for is uh, progress at a football club. And, and in my tenure, has it made progress? Has it moved forward? Have we developed assets on the football pitch? Have we developed assets in the youth team? Have we developed assets in the, the academy uh, system? And you know we've got phone calls. And we've been invited to every 
Cat One Club at the minute, our uh, nines, elevens, thirteens. Uh, there's some exciting players in there. Um, so I look at the the whole picture, and not just maybe a caption of it, you know. And, and and you know, some of the fans want a caption of it, and they want you know they want to understand why you're not winning Saturday to Saturday every Saturday. Uh, but it's not going to happen. You know, it's certainly not going to happen uh, for the now. Um, and everyone said about Chelsea, you know, four weeks ago unbeatable, never get beat, and then, you know, they've they've just been they've not won in the last three. So, <clears throat> you know, people they they like to build you up to knock you down. I think that's part of football. I don't think that's very football club. I think that's football in general. Uh, when you look at Hartlepool and the situation up there uh, with Paul Murray, you know, going from a really good job um, at Oldham really putting his neck on the line to take a, a League 2 job at Hartlepool, lasting seven games. Mm. You know, it, it's, it's, it's the way football is and we've got to, we've got to somehow as a, as a club um, stick together, work together, understand I think what's actually going on and, uh, and how we're progressing as a football club. Uh, I certainly want to build a football club on a, on a really solid found, foundation and the higher you build the building, the lower you've got to go with your foundation, that's something I know just from you know in business interests over my last 20 years of, of being in business. So uh, that's something that's really important. And uh, we are building that foundation. You know what Ian Kendall Strout and Helen Strout are doing the academy. Um, it's quite unique at a League Two club what we're actually doing down at that level. The way Kiddo works with his staff um, and and the kids now. You know, and that's probably one thing I'm gutted about over you know not being able to to watch the boys on Tuesday night, you know, mm. I've put, we've put a real big interest into the youth and into the academy and not being able to watch that, you know, I watched them against Southport and they were fantastic. And then the one thing that, that's de deflated us a bit this week is George Miller's, you know, it potentially, you know, his injury. Uh, that's deflated us as a staff. Uh, it's something that, um, he, he's different to what's out there. George Miller, I've never seen anyone, you know. Is this something serious? Yeah, he's, he's He's gone over on his on his uh, ankle, mm. and we've, we've, we're having it assessed at the minute. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have more news on that over the next sort of 24 hours. But yeah, he's gone over it in the practice game, so we're gutted about that. It's something that he's he, he carries. That he's, he's he's an incredible uh, player that just doesn't know when to stop running, how to stop running. It's Is fantastic. That more enthusiasm, more youth. Um. It's George. It's mm. George. You know, he, he wants to run for his team. He wants to run beyond. It's. I see it every academy game that I go to. When I watch the twenty ones a lot, players don't want to run beyond. Everyone wants to come to the ball and you know, I'm, I'm new to this, this number ten role that everyone wants to play. The amount of agents that for me saying I've got a number ten. I don't want to know because all he wants to do is come to the ball, running away from the ball, and, and George wants to do that. He's got an energy and appetite to do it. So. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm gutted we're going to miss that game Tuesday, but you know we've we've got one of our own that we can look forward to um, down at Luton. Twelve months ago, the first thing he said to me after getting the job was, "I'm buzzing, I'm excited." Is that still there? The, the staff at times have asked me to take days off. You know, they've said to me, "Gaffer, take a day off." You know, get you, get yourself at home. Um, and I don't know if it's the locality, you know, that, but I've got to come in. You know, even on a day off, I'll come in at night at the academy. Um, I don't enjoy having days off really because you know I'd rather be in the football club working. Uh, I love working with this group of players, and I think you know with with the chair um, and, and Ian and Glenn and the way that it's been put together and the way the commercial team works and the way that you know that that, that everyone in the football club is trying to plow in the right direction. Um, it is fantastic, honestly. It's a great place to come to work. It really is, and, and I enjoy my work. You know, I always have done. Um, I'm buzzing because you know I'm, I'm a person that wants to get better, want to improve, I uh, want to improve what I do as a, as a human being. Um, but you know I want to keep improving this group, and we've seen that. You know I've seen that with with the boys that are, that are continually performing well. Um, that you know we've got strikers at goal scoring charts, we've got Danny May flying, Nathan Cam flying. We've got good assets in that football team, and that's one thing that when I come to the football club, uh, we didn't have. So we, we've progressed really well as a club.